Let's get it going. A ton of representation in Baltimore. Six Orioles among the finalists. At first base, it's Ryan Mountcastle. Never been to an All-Star game. Vlad Jr., ex the reigning home run derby champion, has now done it again. Well, we've been waiting to see, okay, is Vladdy going to come back and have sort of that MVP caliber season? He's done it. He started to take off in May, did it in June, hitting the home runs to all fields. When you look at a power threat in the middle of the order, it doesn't get much better than Vladimir Guerrero Jr. A four-time All-Star now. He leads the Blue Jays in all three Triple Crown categories. You can see comfortably in front of Ryan Mountcastle. The finalists at second base are both world champions. Both have been to multiple All-Star games. Marcus Semien twice. Jose Altuve eight times as a member of the Astros. We can now officially make it nine. It's the sixth time Altuve has been a starter X. Only Freddie Freeman has more career hits among active players. And that's what sticks out to me, too, is he's a guy at the top of the order that leads off games with a lot of that power but can go and hit doubles the other way. He's always a guy that's on base and tough to just get him out, right? That's why he's been a starter six times now. A 55% of the vote ahead of Marcus Simeon. The future of the shortstop position in the American League is the present. Gunnar Henderson and Bobby Witt Jr. Witt just turned 24. Gunnar celebrated his 23rd birthday just five days ago. And X, he's celebrating a trip to the All-Star game tonight. And he doesn't stop hitting home runs. You talk about winning the NL, uh, AL Rookie of the Year and then looking to be on MVP caliber right now. Think about the expectations that are on him, too, as a team that's looking to get to a World Series. He's been doing a great job of being the biggest piece in this uh, Orioles lineup. Top five in the American League in both home runs and runs batted in. And you can bet Witt will be there, but it will be Gunnar Henderson, the starter at shortstop. We bring in our Jeff Passan now. And, Jeff, you see the youth on this team in many ways. It feels like the late 1990s again, the golden generation when it was A-Rod and Jeter and no more Garcia Parra. Yeah, and it's amazing to think, Kevin, that Bobby Witt Jr. is exactly what you want in a franchise player. He plays great defense. He's as fast as anybody in the game. He hits home runs. He hits triples. He hits doubles. And yet Gunnar Henderson has been better this season. And I think that just speaks to the caliber of player that Henderson has made himself into. If you were starting a franchise today and you could pick anyone in baseball to have, I think the vast majority of executives at this point would pick Gunnar Henderson, which says a lot about just how good he is. Again, only 23 years old, and he just turned 23 years old. And we've got so much more from Jeff throughout the course of this evening. At third base, Jose Ramirez has sparkled again, helping power the Guardians to the best record in the American League. Jordan Westberg has been a big leaguer for a year and a week, and he's already a finalist, but he's not overtaking J-Ram. His third fan selection, X tying Sandy Alomar Jr. and Kenny Lofton for the most in Cleveland history. Well, he's leading a team that's all of a sudden become offensive, and one of the numbers that sticks out to me is 14 two-strike home runs. Leads Major League Baseball. He's not afraid to get to two strikes. He's got great discipline, great play discipline, understand what he's doing at the plate, and then plays really good defense over there at third base. And again, a lot of credit to Westberg for making it that close there. The fans in Baltimore as well, but it will be Ramirez getting the start. The catcher position in the American League comes down to both baseball's active career home run leader in Salvador Perez and the man who's tied for the current home run league among catchers in 2024, Adley Rutschman. Second year in a row, X, he's an all-star. Yeah, and I just look at how he's done an amazing job since coming up, commanding a great staff, but also going out there and destroying baseballs. OPS Plus at 135 right now, doing a great job just getting on base. But I also look at the 15 home runs. He's a power threat from behind the plate and can go both ways. He's top 10 in hits and RBIs in the American League, and he is the man behind the plate. Adley, congratulations. Second year in a row for you. You did the Derby last year as well. What did you learn in Seattle that you might take into Arlington this year? I, I think just the experience last year taught me a lot and uh, being able to go into this year, uh, kind of knowing how it works a little bit definitely helps. And uh, I think, you know, we got a lot of guys going, so um, it's, it's going to be nice to 
um, experience everything uh, with your teammates. Yeah, we've we've learned so far that Gunnar Henderson will be joining you in Arlington. What's it like to have that sort of accomplishment here at this early stage of your careers? Um, honestly, I think it's just a testament to uh, the work that he's put in, uh, the dedication, and um, you know the guy is just impressive all around as a human being, as a baseball player, and so. Uh, it's been fun to watch him grow and, and develop uh, into the player that he is now. So uh, it's uh, he definitely deserves it. it. It is a largely young Baltimore Orioles team. How do you describe what you have been able to accomplish over the past year and a half? I mean, I think uh, just overall uh, from the coaching staff uh, to, you know, the trainers, players, front office, there's just a collective mindset and process that guys really stick to. Um, they show up to the ballpark, they're ready to go, they bring energy. And I think uh, when you combine all those aspects and, and it makes for a very fun environment, uh, an environment that guys enjoy showing up to and playing together, playing for each other. Um, so it, uh, it, you know, overall just, I think uh, there's a lot of good things uh, going on. And yet it's not that long ago, Adley, that the buzz in Baltimore was nowhere near what it is right now. Six Orioles among the finalists in the fan vote. What does that say about the Oriole fan? Uh, there's just a lot of support. Um, you know, uh, it's a show up to the ballpark every day, uh, feel the energy from the fans. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, it makes up for the experience that you have. And uh, just to hear how kind everyone is, uh, how supportive everyone is, it, it means the world. And um, I think uh, just feeling that on a day-to-day -day basis means so much. Adley, give us someone that you haven't met or that you haven't gotten to know too well that you look forward to getting to meet or know better in Arlington. Oh, gosh. Uh, last year I had such a good time uh, talking to everyone and, I think uh, just being able to have conversations with people that you normally don't get to is, is always such a, a fun aspect uh, that I, uh, I looked forward to last year and I'm looking forward to this year. So uh, just continuing to try to, uh, you know, to get to know people around the league and I think uh, just see where everyone's different background, where they come from and kind of hearing their story and uh, what makes them good and is, is always fun to talk about. But there will be so many of your teammates that figure to be there. Is the Homer hose going to make it to Arlington? <laughs> I think we'll keep that in Baltimore. But uh, that's a good idea. You know, that's a fun thing for everyone. For sure it has. And it's been a very, very fun first half of the season for you, Adley Rutschman, and the rest of the Baltimore Orioles. Congratulations on your second All-Star team, and thanks so much for the time tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot. Back with Xavier Scruggs, Kevin Connors, a tender hamstring, has Bryce Harper on the 10-day IL right now. But it hardly kept the Philly superstar out of the conversation. Harper won the first round of All-Star voting, earning an automatic trip to Arlington. His eighth selection, though he has not played in an All-Star game since 2018. X, he's on pace to have a better year than he did in both of his two MVP seasons. <laughs> I mean, very rarely do we see a guy that's given $330 million living up to those type of expectations. And he's been having to do it since he was 15, 16 years old, two-time MVP. The, the, what he does in the postseason has been special. They built this team around him. But also think about that transition over to first base, right? Being able to do that seamlessly while still providing offensive power. Everything evolves around him in that lineup, and he makes everybody better. He's become a leader as well as he's matured since coming over to the Philadelphia Phillies. There's just something special about being around Bryce Harper and what he's done to that Phillies team. And let's be honest, the Dodgers obviously having an amazing season, but given all that they did in the offseason, the Phillies have been the talk of the National League. Yeah, and they deserve to be, right? Because you think about the pitching. That's been one of the areas in which they've had a lot of success, being able to go out there and give their guys a lot of innings, but also the middle of that order continues to be a threat. You think about guys like Alec Bohm, who's stepped up in a major way this season. Bryce Harper has done it. Kyle Schwarber at the top of that order. They've had their fair share of injuries, but the production has not stopped for the Philadelphia Phillies. Philly's going to be well represented here as we run through the National League. We've covered first base at second base. Another dynamite year for Luisa Rise, second only to the great Otani in the NL in batting average. No second baseman in all of baseball, though, has more home runs than Cattell Marte with 17. 
At X, he's the starter. He joins Goldschmidt as the only Diamondbacks to win multiple fan votes. Yeah, and remember, this is a switch hitter that does it from both sides of the plate, has power from both sides of the plate. He's also driven in 50 runs, so when guys are on base, he knows how to catch those guys in and does an amazing job on defense as well. This is one of the best players that we have in our game. Cattell Marte it may not get enough credit. That's a great point for a Diamondback team that played for a World Series a season ago. A comfortable edge over a rise. The star power at short is off the charts in the National League. Trey Turner, despite missing almost half of the season with a hamstring injury, still hitting 338. Mookie Betts has been an all-star as an outfielder seven times. And he's going to be there in Arlington, but it's a fan vote, and X, the winner is Turner. I thought it was really hard to see Mookie just disappear <laughs> off the screen right like that. But Trey Turner obviously deserves some love. This is a guy that OPS at 147, OPS plus at 147, so 47% better than league average. He's getting back to stealing bases. Now that he's healthy, the average is there. I'm excited to see what he continues to do the rest of this season. Hey, look, I don't know if it's hanging chads, but, I mean, it doesn't get any closer yeah, than that. That's a tight voting. one. That's a tight one right there. 51 to 49, by the way. Turner, the first Philly shortstop to win the election since Jimmy Rollins in 2002. At third, Manny Machado is eyeing his seventh All Star game selection. Finished second in the MVP voting just two years ago. Alec Bohm, the current National League RBI leader with 68. And Bohm is the third Phillies infielder in the NL starting lineup that matches the 82 Phils. Bohm has been sensational. Man, it seems like so long ago when he said, get me out of this place, right? That doing an amazing job there in Philly has really turned it around from an offensive standpoint, driving in guys. I like the idea that now you see him continuing to stick with that same approach. He has not lost that approach that he's had since the beginning of the season, and he's continuing to reject the right way. And again, the IQ of the baseball fan on display. Machado is a future Hall of Famer, but Bohm has been having the better season. Alec Bohm, Alec, congratulations. What do you suppose the kid who grew up in Omaha and went to Ron Colley High School 10 years ago would say about that introduction? <laughs> He'd think it's pretty crazy, but uh, yeah, I mean, to me, it just kind of shows me how far I've come and, uh, you know, all the steps along the way were worth it for sure. Well, let's talk about that. You're not some long shot who made it. You are a former number three overall pick, but there was a process to get here. How do you describe your evolution as a player? Right. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes it takes time, a little bit of time to get comfortable, a little bit of you know, time to grow up and all that stuff, you know, not all of us come up here and, you know, just reach our full potential from the get-go. I mean, it's it's a hard league. You got a lot of stuff to learn. And, uh, you know, I just kind of took it year by year, step at a time, and, you know, finally kind of learned some things, put some things together. And, you know, this year it's kind of showing. Yeah, and it's showing in a big way. You, you lead the National League in runs batted in. What do you attribute your success to with runners in scoring position? Uh, I, I mean, especially this year, I think it's just a lot of opportunity. I mean, you know, when you got guys like Trey, Bryce, Kyle hitting in front of you pretty much every at bat, <laughs> I mean, I'm getting at least one pretty good RBI opportunity every night with those guys hitting in front of me. And, uh, you know, obviously with Trey's speed, Bryce can run. JT, when he's healthy, he's obviously running. I mean, there's just a lot of speed, a lot of opportunity, and, uh, you know, I've been the beneficiary of it this year. Alec, you play, as you said, on what amounts to essentially uh, an all-star team there in Philadelphia. What are you looking forward to in Arlington when you go to a clubhouse full of and onto a field full of the best players in the world? Yeah, you know, I think it's uh, obviously, you know, something you dream about as a kid, something that's – you know, not to be taken lightly, but I think it's just going to be cool to be able to, you know, look over to my left and see the guy I play with every night over there and, you know, look across the field and throw the ball to the guy I throw the ball to every night. So I think it's just, uh, you know, kind of cool to be able to have that moment, but to be able to have that moment with, you know, a couple of the guys that showed you the way too. Alec, the starters were a fan vote. Six Philadelphia Phillies among the finalists here. What does that say about the fans in Philly? I mean, it's we're lucky to have them, you know, uh, people can say what they want about Philadelphia sports fans. But, you know, from my perspective, we're lucky to have them. And, you know, it's 
don't matter what day of the week it is. It can be a random Tuesday in May, and it's you know 44,000 sold out. Great atmosphere. It's it's been a lot of fun. Well, look, I dig the shirt. And I dig the player as well. Alec, congratulations on a phenomenal first half and a trip to the All-Star Game. Alec Bohm, thanks for the time. Yeah, appreciate you having me. With nearly 3.5 million votes through round one, no player in baseball had more votes than Aaron Judge. It's his sixth fan vote win. Judge leads the majors in all three Triple Crown categories. He's also tops in OPS, and for perspective, He's more than 100 points better than Otani in the category of OPS. Again, 3.5 million votes here through the first vote. As we bring back Jeff Passan, Jeff, I'll start with you. How do you put into context the first half that Aaron Judge has had? I think we tend to get caught up in the moment and just how great a player looks or what kind of an incredible season he's having. Well, Aaron Judge is having a first half at least for the ages, Kevin. And we also need to remember he was struggling so bad in his first month that he got booed at Yankee Stadium on April 20th. Well, over his last 50 games, Aaron Judge has 26 home runs and is OPSing over 1450 for the first half. He has an OPS plus, which is adjusted against the league and against your park where 100 is average of 221. What that means is Aaron Judge is two and a quarter times better than the average player in big league baseball. And over the course of an entire season, the last person to do that was Barry Bonds every year from 2001 to 2004. Before that, Kevin, Ted Williams and Mickey Mantle in 1957. That is how good Aaron Judge has been in the first half this season. So basically, to put it in context, it's stupid what he's doing right now <laughs> is what you're saying. I, I look at one thing for me is what he does with the fastball. As a young hitter, you're always taught do not miss the fastball. He bats 379 against that pitch, slugs 793 against that pitch. And to me, what it does is allows him to understand I don't have to try and go get the baseball. I can use the whole field, but also he's really good with two strikes, 13 home runs with two strikes is second to only Jose Ramirez. So when you think about pitchers trying to command their fastball, they don't even have the opportunity to do that against Judge because he's so good at not missing that pitch. And again, given all the numbers we've talked about, considering April was essentially a lost month, it's just been staggering to see what Judge has done. Jeff, stand by. we got much more. Who's going to join Aaron Judge in the outfield? Well, other finalists include Juan Soto, who carried the Yanks for the month of April, Stephen Kwan, Anthony Santander, the sixth Oriole finalist, and Kyle Tucker. And it will be Soto and Kwan. It's Soto's fourth trip to the All-Star Game, X first time as an American leaguer. Well, I mean, he came over to this team, and he said before the season started he wanted to hit a home run at every stadium he went to. That showed me that power was going to be a priority, and it has been so far this year. 20 home runs, but also doing a great job of being a leader and a catalyst for this team. You think about Stephen Kwan as well. Uh, I'm looking at a guy that now OPS sits at 947. That's normally associated with power hitters. He's only got seven home runs, so it tells you he hits a lot of doubles, and he does a great job at getting on base, does not chase, does not swing and miss, and does not strike out. He's the first Cleveland player to win a fan vote since Juan Gonzalez back in 2001. At X, when you consider what Santander has done and Kyle Tucker, who was in the MVP discussion for a good portion of the first half of the season here, Judge Soto Kwan yeah. is an interesting outfield. Yeah, it is interesting because Kyle Tucker obviously had an MVP caliber start. But when I look at Stephen Kwan and that offense for the Guardians, there's a reason why it's gone that way. And a lot of it has because of Stephen Kwan at the top of the order, a guy that does a great job working at bats. He doesn't walk a whole lot, but what he does do is gets on base because he does not miss the baseball. He's got such great bat-to-ball skills. That's why he hits so many line drives, and he's put on some weight. So now you're seeing some of those doubles go a little bit further, and he's got himself a few more homers so far. Guys, he's batting 362 in an era where batters average about 240. But it's not just the batting average. It is that he strikes out 7.8% of the time. 
in an era where batters strike out about 23% of the time. And oh, by the way, on top of that, Stephen Kwan is slugging 526 this year. Let's not get past the fact that he has added a power element to this game. And on top of that, it's a guy who's won consecutive gold gloves and plays fantastic defense. Uh, this is a surprise only because I don't think people appreciate just how good of a baseball player Stephen Kwan is. And X pointing out that he's gained weight makes him even more relatable, too, to the average fan, I think, uh, the, <laughs> starting in the American League alongside Judge and Soto. All right, it's time to run through the American League starting lineup here in 2024 at the All-Star Game in Arlington, and it's brought to you by BuildSubmarines.com. Jeff, what does it look like to you? I almost batted Quan first, but I went with Gunnar Henderson. Been an incredible leadoff hitter this year. Your best hitter in the lineup should be number two. That's Aaron Judge, backed up by Juan Soto. Jordan Alvarez is the perfect cleanup hitter. Jose Ramirez, a switch hitter at number five. Stephen Quan at number six. A little odd place for a guy hitting 362, but he's got the best offensive numbers among the rest with Vladimir Guerrero, Adley Rutschman, and Jose Altuve. And let me say this, Kevin Connors. I urge Rob Thompson, the manager of the National League team, or Tori Lavello, the manager of the National League team, rather, uh, I urge him to go and pick Paul Skeens to start. Because if the idea is to get eyeballs on this game, if the idea is to have baseball fans see and feel a moment that excites them, Paul Skeens versus Gunnar Henderson Aaron Judge and Juan Soto is a pretty darn good place to do it. 